for years now when I hear confessions, instead of giving maybe the usual five Hail Marys or three Our Fathers, what I will ask the person to do, I'll say, okay, your penance is, you have to thank God for three things, and when you thank him, you have to do it with a smile. And the person always laughs. And I do this because a smile can make a little difference in their life. And sometimes we have to choose to smile even when we don't want to. And just that little thing can give us that boost. We said last week that St. Paul wrote the letter to the Philippians while he was in prison. And today again, we have the letter to the Philippians. And he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And so St. Paul's spirit today, that incredible, joyful spirit in Jesus, that's what we're going to aim for. A lot of us, we suffer from spiritual desolation, and we're all, we're all going to suffer from it. But we really want to get to that level of spiritual maturity, G, uh, St. Paul rejoicing in Jesus. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about uh, rules four and five in the discernment of spirits. Last week, we talked about rules eight and nine. And today, we're talking about rule six. And this is what St. Ignatius of Loyola writes. It is very advantageous to change ourselves intensely against the desolation itself, as by insisting more upon prayer, meditation, upon much examination, and upon extending ourselves in some suitable way of doing penance. Some of you might remember two weeks ago when we said, if you're in spiritual desolation, don't change your spiritual commitments. With me? Yes. Now St. Ignatius is enhancing that. He's saying, okay, don't change your commitments. But do change something, what? Yourself, in four ways. He says prayer, meditation, much examination, and doing pen penance. So if we can do those four things, you can really actually save yourself spiritually. Let's go through each four. Number one, prayer. St. Paul says today, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so when we're feeling spiritually down, we feel God is far away. How do you feel? You don't want to pray, obviously. At that moment when you don't feel like praying, that's when you really have to pray. You got to rely not less on God. You have to rely more on God. So a typical thing what we will do is when we're feeling down, we cut our prayer short. Let's say you're going to cut it short by 10 minutes. So St. Ignatius of Loyola says, extend your prayer by 10 minutes. If you want to actually break the desolation, you have to go exactly contrary to it. Now, of course, that doesn't apply when you're in non-spiritual desolation. If you have to go feed the baby, go feed the baby. We're talking about spiritual desolation. You want to, I, I just want to finish the prayer, get it over with. I want to go back to my phone. No. Extend your prayer and you'll conquer the evil one. Number two, meditation. So we're talking about pondering truths of the Bible or just truths of the faith. So St. John, Ber uh, sorry, Dr. John Bergsma, he's a scripture scholar. He has memorized the entire second reading. And whenever he can't sleep, when he's got anxiety, he just starts repeating it over and over again. That's uh, meditation. I'll give you some other examples. This little book by St. Jose Maria Escriva, um, it just has his sayings and all of them are just one to three sentences long. You take a book like this and you just do one per day. You're just meditating on it. So get a book like this um, or a book uh, that goes through the Bible in one year or something like daily meditations. Those can be really helpful for you to meditate. Number three, much examination. So in the book I showed you last week, it's called Discernment of Spirits in Marriage. Uh, the character in it, in it, her name is Anne, and she's an educational assistant at a school. And one uh, day in an afternoon, she's really disturbed. So she does examination with three questions. She says, Jesus, what is happening this afternoon? What am I feeling? How did I get this way? 
And she realizes in the morning she was working with uh, this little boy named Steve. Steve has special needs. And she tries so hard to help him. And that day, nothing worked. And so it really disturbed her. It gave her non-spiritual desolation, which turned into spiritual desolation. And with that examination, she comes up with an, uh, a response. She decides she's going to talk to her supervisor. And whenever she does, she always feels better. And right away when she made that decision to talk to the supervisor, that darkness started lifting. I'll show you another example of examination. Some of you might remember this. This is a kind of spiritual journaling which helps you understand what God is trying to do. On the left, take any piece of paper or any book in your journal. On the left-hand side of the page, you write down everything that's bothering you, everything that's annoying you, and be specific. Those are your temptations. And on the right-hand side of the page, you write down all the truths because some of what tempts you is not always true. So write down those truths and then write down the graces you're asking Jesus for. So I cannot tell you how many times I've done this in my life. I always go to the, this kind of journaling when I'm going nuts. And so I've done it, I'd say, about 50 times in my life, 50 pieces of paper, and then I always shred it so that no one sees it. But think about doing this kind of examination. Uh, number four some suitable way of doing penance. So smiling could be a super good penance for you. Like fasting might not help you, but smiling would. Why? Because you're going contrary to where the desolation is leading you. Wherever the desolation leads you, always do the exact opposite. Venerable Bruno Lanteri said, he told one layperson, for you, Penance means the effort to live each moment with a gentle and joyful spirit. I'll give you another example. Whenever we're in spiritual desolation, we typically turn in on ourselves. You know, when you're feeling down, you generally don't want to see people. We generally don't want to help people. That's true for all of us. Those are the exact moments when we want to go help someone. So St. Paul again says today, let your gentleness be known to everyone. And so when you're feeling down, that's the exact moment to literally, seriously, go clean your house for someone in your family. Go send someone an email or a text to cheer them up. For a minute, don't think about yourself. Just go cheer them up or go volunteer, go help someone. Venerable Fulton Sheen, he said, if you're suffering from an existential crisis, he said, even before you pray, go help your neighbor. Now, he was thinking about people who are very far from God. He said, just go help your neighbor. They're not yet ready for prayer. But you see what he's getting at here. And if I could mention some, something to uh, the young adults here. So if you consider yourself a young adult, this one is, applies to you. And it's this. Please don't wait for finding a perfect calling, a perfect vocation before you sacrificially give and help other people. One thing a lot of us Catholic young adults go through, and, and you're all sincere, that's why you're here. But one thing a lot of you go through is that you serve God for yourself. You turn to God because you get something out of it. Like even the career you choose, yes, the career you choose helps other people, but ultimately you're probably doing it for yourself. That's human nature but it's something we've got to start fighting against because uh, this makes us super vulnerable to desolation. So for a lot of Catholic young adults, they're always hitting desolation, either every week, every month, or every two months, and, and hitting some significant spiritual desolation. It's because you're typically focused on yourself and you don't even realize it. And so in those moments, if you can go against it and say, you know what, I'm gonna to go to the chapel and even if I get nothing out of it, it's for God. Or I'm going to go serve the parish or go help a friend and I feel terrible. That's the moment where you change. Start thinking more about other people. And if you, you do that more and more, you become super resilient to desolation because you're more like Jesus. We're approaching Christmas now, uh, just under two weeks. And now is the perfect time to turn outwards, to think more about other people. So a lot of us have been doing our 1102 prayer cards. Praise God. If you're not yet doing it, I hope you can start it and get on board. We're really praying for the people we love. 
And so this, I'd like to suggest something very practical in line with what St. Paul is, is teaching us. Let our gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. It's this. Would you think about not buying people a gift this Christmas and instead do a more intentional act of love for them? So one statistic says that women spend 20 hours shopping for Christmas gifts. Men spend 10. I think we actually probably spend more than that because we look online looking for great deals. Yes? Okay. And when I was younger, I used to buy my brothers uh, presents sometimes that I knew they wouldn't like so that they would give it to me. <laughs> so what does Jesus really want from us this Christmas? What does Jesus want from us this Christmas? He wants the heart. He wants our hearts because he gives his heart to us. And he wants us to give our hearts to other people. There are some people in our lives the gift means a lot to them. Okay, so for those people, buy them the gift. But for other people, seriously, they'd rather you spend three hours with them rather than you spending three hours shopping for them. And a big hug would go a lot farther for some people than a gift. If you were to spend, say, one hour writing out a thoughtful card rather than one hour online looking for a gift, because we all like making great deals and oh, I got it, I bought it at a, 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 on sale. Okay, instead of that, one hour writing a card, or could, like if you did someone an act of service, for some people that, that would make their Christmas. The point is the intentionality. And then the greatest gift we could give people is Jesus. We're the only ones who can give it. No one else, presumably, will be giving Jesus at Christmas. So the human heart longs for God, for transcendence, for true eternal meaning. So that's what we can offer people. So think about inviting people. I hope some of you would take Alpha this uh, first week of January. Think about inviting people to that. Okay, the three, three times in the gospel today, people go to St. John the Baptist and they say, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? So if you're in spiritual desolation, you're feeling spiritually down, you want to know what you should do? It's this. Go to God, not for yourself. Out of, go for him. And stop trying to cheer yourself up. Try to cheer other people up. And then you'll find you'll be cheered up. St. Paul again says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.